You think you have a limit. As soon as you touch this limit, something happens and you suddenly can go a little bit further. With your mind power, your determination, your instinct, and the experience as well, you can fly very high. The name Ayrton Senna brings up powerful emotions for not only racing fans. Too many, he's the greatest race driver to have ever pressed a gas pedal. His skill and nerves allowed him to do the things on the track that no one had seen before or since. A much smaller group considers him a villain, a danger because of his single-mindedness and overpowering desire to win. But to all, he was a genuinely remarkable human being who experienced an amazing ascent, racking up race wins and never forgetting his roots. At a time of great poverty and unrest in his home country of Brazil, Senna was a flare of light, a symbol of what Brazilians were capable of. And that's why not only his people, but people all around the world loved him. Ayrton Senna da Silva was born on March 21, 1960, in a wealthy Brazilian family. Growing up, he enjoyed the privilege of his parents. Senna never needed to race for money. His deep love for racing began in a very early age. Encouraged by his father, at the age of four, he already had an incredible ability with go-kart. And from there, the passion for the accelerated engine only increased. In 1977, he felt the taste of victory for the first time. That was the moment when he decided to dedicate his life to the sport of racing. The racing was his passion. It was the thing that would bring meaning to his life. As a young boy, the highlights of Ayrton's life were Grand Prix mornings when he woke up trembling with anticipation at the prospect of watching his Formula 1 heroes in action on television. Eight years later, he went single-seater racing in England, where in three years he won five championships. His Formula 1 debut was in 1984, a race that he would win six times. His sensational second to Alan Prost McLaren in pouring rain was confirmation of the potential talent that would take the sport by storm. Not even a year after his debut, Senna would change his team. Ayrton decided to move to Lotus due to Toleman's limited resources. Senna was aiming the highest highs and Toleman's ambitions were not matching it. In Lotus, he started from pole 16 times and won 6 races. Later, the same thing happened with Lotus. Senna reached the limits of the team. He decided the fastest way forward would be with McLaren, where he went in 1988 and stayed there for 6 seasons, winning 35 races and 3 world championships. In 1988, when McLaren Honda won 15 out of 16 races, Senna beat his teammate Alan Prost and won his first driving title. Thereafter, two of the greatest drivers became protagonists in one of the most infamous racing clashes. In 1989, Prost took the title by taking Senna out at the Suzuka corner. In 1990, Senna got his revenge at Suzuka's first corner, winning his second championship by taking out Prost's Ferrari. Senna's third title was in 1991. It was a pure domination by Brazilian driver. Some of his greatest performances came in his final year with McLaren, following which he moved to Williams Racing Team for the fatal season of 1994. Beyond his driving genius, Senna was one of the sport's most compelling personalities. Ayrton possessed a powerful physical presence when he spoke. Senna had an enormous charisma. He would be a role model and inspirator for future generations of drivers. All his press conferences and interviews had a hypnotic effect. He was truly the best in the world, not only in driving, but in being himself. Senna was a face of Formula One. Senna would put so much on himself, into everything he did, not just driving but into life itself. 
the thrilling spectacle of Senna on all-out qualifying lap or a relentless change through the field evoked an uneasy combination of both, admiration for his superlative skill and the fear for his future. He drove like an obsessed man, a man possessed by demons. His ruthless ambitions provoked not only critics, but his good old friend Alan Prost, who accused him of caring more about winning than living. When Senna revealed he had discovered religion, Prost and others suggested he was a dangerous madman who thought God was his co-pilot. Even Senna confessed he occasionally went too far, as was the case in qualifying for the 1988 Monaco Grand Prix, where he became a passenger on a surreal ride into unknown. Already on pole, he went faster and faster, and was eventually over two seconds quicker than Prost in the identical McLaren. Suddenly, it frightened me, Ayrton said, because I realized I was well beyond my conscious understanding. I drove back slowly to the pits and didn't go out anymore that day. And I know I can die, or I can have a tremendous uh, impact in my future life. He said he was aware of his own mortality, and used fear to control the extent of the boundaries he felt compelled to explore. Indeed, he regarded racing as a metaphor for life, and he used driving as a means of self-discovery. Senna himself said, For me, this research is fascinating. Every time I push, I find something more, again and again. But there is a contradiction. The same moment that you become the fastest, you are enormously fragile because in a split second, it can be gone. All of it, these two extremes contribute to knowing yourself deeper and deeper. But Senna's greatest accomplishments may have come off the track. It only became clear after his untimely death that Senna had been donating millions of his own money to charities for children in his home country. Despite growing up in somewhat privileged circumstances, Senna recognized the hardships that many of his countrymen faced and was most concerned about kids and their future. Racing, competing, was in his blood. It was part of him. It was his life. At the Williams team, where he replaced his good old nemesis Alan Prost, who retired after winning his fourth world title. In the first two races, Senna got two poles but also as many retreats. Imola seemed the perfect location for redemption, but the incident of Baricello in Friday practice and Ratzenberg's crash in Saturday's qualifying deeply marked him. Senna showed up in a pole position, the 65th of his career, the record that would be beaten only by Schumacher and Hamilton. The negative atmosphere of the pre-race days became even heavier immediately after the start with an accident that ended up injuring several spectators in the stands. After five laps driven by the safety car, the race resumed in an increasingly distressed manner. Senna would hide an Austrian flag in the cabin to dedicate the eventual victory to Ratzenberg. After covering the long straight at more than 300 km per hour, he was preparing to face the Tomborello curve, the fastest in the whole world. When the failure of the steering column made him lose control of the car, it led him to crash at high speed against the wall on the track. The impact was horrible. The strut of the right front suspension broke and entered his helmet, breaking his right temporal region and causing serious injuries. The team, led by the Formula One doctor and his friend Sid Watkins, rushed in and extracted him from the cockpit. Senna was transported by the helicopter to the Maggiore Hospital in Bologna, where at 6.40 pm, after unsuccessful attempts to save his life, he was declared dead. No one tried harder to push himself further nor did anyone shed so much light on the extremes to which only the greatest drivers go. Ayrton Senna endlessly tried to extend his limits, to go faster than himself, a quest that ultimately took his life. Ayrton was no ordinary person. He was a greater man out of the car than in it. Once you in it, you in it, and you've got to go all the way to the end. 
because you commit yourself to such a level where there is no compromise. You give everything you have, everything, absolutely everything. And sometimes you find even more because it requires more if you want still to be ahead, if you want to win.